If you're in the very early stages of building out your SaaS business and you're thinking about raising a seed round, it can get really complicated really fast. There's pre-seed, seed, seed plus, then there's series A, but then there's angels. And then when you get into figuring out what stage you're at, you have to figure out your pitch deck, you have to figure out accelerators, you have to figure out how to get introductions. It gets real complicated real fast. So in this video, having gone through the whole process, I'm gonna walk you through the five steps, the five key steps you need to follow to actually raise your seed round for your SaaS business. Intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, and on this channel, I help SaaS founders like you grow your SaaS businesses faster with an unstoppable strategy. If you are new to the channel, I drop a video like this with actionable strategies and tactics to grow your SaaS business three times a week. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon. That way you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode with the TK Energy. Now, if you are already part of our community, if you're part of my SaaS go-to-market coaching program, welcome back. It's really awesome to see you guys over here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about raising your seed round. I remember when I was raising my seed round, we had for ToutApp, my last SaaS business, we had raised a small angel round. We called it an advisory round. Then we went through an accelerator program. We went through 500 startups accelerator program. I moved to Mountain View and we were batch number one, literally batch number one. So we built out the business, we had revenues, we had growth and a demo day came and we were the first to present out of like a batch of I think 60 companies or something like that. And then nothing, crickets. Like no one invested, investors kind of like talked to us, but no one invested, nothing happened. We were not able to raise a seed round. Now, needless to say, we went on to raise a seed round later. We raised a series A from Jackson Square Ventures. We raised a series B from Andreessen Horowitz. We grew the business and we sold it to a market leader. We were fine, like the business turned out to be fine. But in that very moment, it was soul crushing because I had moved to Mountain View, California. We had rented out an apartment. We were building, building, building. We were growing revenues. A bunch of stuff was coming into play, but investors were just not interested. And that's why I learned the hard way and what it really takes to raise a seed round. And that's what I'm gonna be walking you through, my hard learned principles and steps. So if you're excited to dig in on the five steps to raising your seed round, go ahead and smash that like button. And let's go to step number one, principle number one. The first thing you gotta do is you gotta acknowledge that there's essentially two ways to raise. You can either raise on promise or you can raise on traction. Promise or traction. And this is the age old thing, like everyone struggles with this on do we have enough, do we have enough traction? I'm gonna break it down for you because I think that definitions online are a lot more forgiving, whereas the real market, when it comes to investors, it's actually a lot more ruthless. So the ruthless definition of whether you're ready or not is you can raise on promise if you have an amazing team with a clear track record and the right looking pedigree. Meaning if you guys are all ex Stanford, MIT grads, or you were early engineers at Uber or Twitter, or you, you, know, you just have the right background, you have, a, have had a successful startup before, then you can go to investors and you can raise on promise. That's, that's how it, kinda how it goes, at least on a seed round or even a pre-seed round. If you're none of those things, if you're not matching the pedigree or the past track record, or you don't have an existing relationship with this particular investor, then you likely won't be able to raise on promise. That is the ruthless truth. That is how the market works. So don't waste time trying to raise on promise because chances are 99.9% .9 of people are just not good enough to raise on promise. And that's the honest truth. Now, if you are not pissed off at me and you're still watching this video, let's keep going because I'm gonna teach you exactly how to raise. So now the second one is traction. The second way to raise is traction. There's essentially two ways you can raise on traction. The first way is you have uh, millions of users with incredible retention, meaning you may not have revenue, but you have a lot of users, a huge audience, and the retention numbers are incredible. What that means is that the free product, people are gonna keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back, and there's probably a way to monetize. You can create that thesis and you can raise on that traction. If you don't have millions of users and incredibly high retention rates, then the only other thing investors will accept in terms of traction is cold, hard cash, meaning you have quality growth and you have quality revenues because you figured out your initial go-to-market machine. 
So that's step number one. You just, before you even invest, pitch anyone, ask for introductions, create a pitch, before you do any of those things, you need to figure out, given your business today, where you're at whether you're raising on promise or whether you're raising on traction. And the, and the cold hard truth is investors don't exist to fund your dream. They don't exist to make your vision a reality. They exist to turn an ROI on their investments. That's by and large majority of investors. And these are the only two ways they'll invest, either on promise, they'll back a team that they trust or has the right pedigree, or they'll back on traction, millions of users and revenue and retention or revenue growth and quality revenue growth. So that's step number one. Step number two is what you gotta think about is even if you have one of those two things, everyone defaults to venture capital. But the truth is, a very small percentage of businesses out there are actually right for venture capital. And today, more than ever, there are different ways to actually fund your business. So before you go into your seed round and start jumping into things, once you figure out are you raising on promise or traction, if you pass that gate, then the next thing to figure out is what type of funding model do you wanna follow? So a lot of times SaaS businesses particularly are bootstrapped. SaaS businesses are becoming cheaper and cheaper to build and cheaper and cheaper to market when you have an efficient go-to-market machine. So it is possible to bootstrap your SaaS business, grow it, and then sell it and make a profit. So bootstrapping is not bad at all. It's very feasible for a SaaS business. Is it feasible for a consumer star? Probably not, but for, for, for a B2B SaaS business, very feasible. Then you wanna think about, okay, are we gonna go the venture route? Now, when you are going the venture route, you have to make sure that you're going after a very big market. That's what's required for venture scale investing to work. If you are building a small business, if you're going after a very small TAM, then VCs are really not gonna invest in you. So you just have to be honest with yourself. You have to figure out, hey, is there a big enough market over here? Now, this is not an easy question to answer, which is why I've got two videos that I've done in this general area to help you figure it out. Now, you don't have to go now, but let me point them out and I'll link to them below. The first video, which you can check out over here, highlights the differences between what you can get when you're bootstrapping, what you can get when you're venture, uh, following venture capital, and what you can get when you're going after what, what's called now as alternative VC, which is a form of fundraising it's not quite venture capital. They have different return expectations, different market expectations. And so you can actually figure out whether you want to bootstrap, you should raise venture capital, or you want to go after alt VC. So you can check out this video. I'll link to it below. You don't have to go yet. The other thing, what it really comes down to in this stage, when you're figuring out what's the right funding strategy for my business, is to really figure out what's your TAM, your total addressable market. When you start to understand what your TAM is, you'll start to actually be able to craft your pitch deck better. You'll be able to present the opportunity to the investors better. And investors are gonna understand if this is a venture scale idea or not. How do you figure out TAM? That's complicated. But fortunately for you, I've done a video on that as well. You can check out this video, which helps you figure out your TAM. I'll link to it below. You don't have to go yet. Let's go through these first. So step number two is really figuring out how you wanna fund the business and what's appropriate given the type of business you have and the goals that you have and how big the market is. Some businesses are better off being bootstrapped and you can make tons of money. Profitable size businesses give incredible lifestyles. Venture backed businesses require huge amount of risk, huge markets, high failure rate, but when they work, they work incredibly well. When they don't work, they don't work so well. So you kind of have to do a gut check on why this is right for you and the way you answer that is by checking out those two videos and I'll link to them below. Step number three is if you're thinking about a seed round, the one thing I always tell founders to do is if you haven't done so yet, focus on getting some angel investors first. Quality angel investors open doors in more ways than one. When it came to raising our seed round, when it came to raising our series A, when it came to raising our series B, and when it came to actually coordinating our exits, angel investors helped us through the whole way. When it came down to getting some of our early customers, angel investors helped us the whole way. We were incredibly fortunate enough to have some incredible angels. And they introduced us to seed funds, to series A funds. In fact, one of our angel investors introduced us to our series B partner at Andreessen Horowitz. And one of our super early advisory investors in introduced me to Founder Collective, to a number of other seed funds that actually came in to our deal. So my point is, if you don't have some quality angels yet on your cap table or already invested, 
figure out how to get them first. They're easier to land if you do it the right way. And once you hook into them, their word, their introductions will carry a lot more weight when they're getting you into the seed funds. Now, you might be wondering, how do I get quality angel investors? How do I get them to open doors? You can check out this video where I dug into how to find key quality angel investors to put in your cap table that's gonna pay off dividends in the long run. So now, those are steps, uh, those are the first three steps, all right? You'll notice most people just start with more asking for introductions or creating a pitch deck. But do these three steps and you will set up your seed fundraise for success, I promise you. I didn't do these the first time around and I didn't gut check on these things the first time around, but when I did, everything changed for my company and my life. And I don't want you to make the same mistakes. I'll save you some troubles and do these three things. Now, before I go to the next two, let me just pause here for a second. If you're starting to see the power in this, if you're starting to get a little bit more jazz, if you're starting to get excited about raising that seed around and you can see how these critical questions can actually help set you up for success. Can I just get a yes in the comments below? Also smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It just helps us out, makes us feel good, makes YouTube feel good. So uh, please do that as well. Also, if you are building a SaaS business and you're in the early stages, you're probably thinking about growth, you're probably thinking about fundraising, clearly you're watching this video. So I invite you to check out my five point SaaS growth strategy guide. It's completely free. I'll tell you more about it at the end of the video. I'll link to it below as well, but let's go to step number four. Okay, so to recap on where we are, number one, figure out the promise versus attraction. Number two, know that there are different ways to fund a business. Venture capital is not always the answer. Number three, if you're still commit committed to venture capital, find angel investors first. And then number four is to actually create your pitch deck. Now your pitch deck is the central point of how you tell your story, how you communicate the opportunity that's ahead, how you communicate your TAM, for example, how you say like, hey, here's what we've accomplished, here's where we're going, here's our vision, here's why you should give us money and buy a portion of the company, which is essentially what you're doing when you're fundraising. So you wanna get your pitch deck right. Now, your pitch deck is gonna be terrible in the beginning after you do a few pitches with investors and you probably pitch hundreds of investors, you'll actually get better and better. So it's important that you actually iterate on your pitch deck as you learn more. Now, how do you create a pitch deck? So I have a very specific format I like to follow for my pitch decks. It's 12 slides and you can check out this video where I go into exactly how to craft your 12 slide pitch deck. I'll link to it below, you don't have to go right now. I'll link to all the videos I've mentioned so that you get the framework here and then you can go into each of the detailed videos after this. So you should actually craft your pitch deck. You should have your angel investors give you feedback. You should do some run throughs with some early investors to, that, that, you know, like maybe are probably not going to invest, but it's good practice. And then you should go after the big guns. And that's how you should do it to battle harden your pitch deck. And then once you have that down, here's the thing that I want to, I want to really stress to you. This was something that I didn't quite understand the first time I was fundraising. I thought that if I went up and down Sand Hill Road and I pitched the smartest investors, which I did, I pitched every single smart investor that are out there, that they would be able to tell me if I'm an idiot or not. They would be able to tell me if my business idea is good or not. Here's the thing. Investors don't decide whether your company is any good. Markets do. Meaning investors are guessing at whether your company going into the market is going to be successful. And if they think it will be based on your pedigree, based on your traction, then they'll invest. When they say no, they're not deciding that it's not a good business idea. When they're saying yes, they're not deciding that it's going to be a business, good business idea. Plenty of investors have made zero money and lost money. Plenty of investors have passed on deals that went on to be Uber. Plenty of investors have bet and went big. So, Investors don't decide whether your market is any good, whether your company is any good. And I remember like personally when I was doing that seed round and even like every fundraising stage is like super hard and soul crushing and then you get it done one way or another. I remember like I would drive down to Sand Hill Road, I was in San Francisco and on the way back I would stop at the In-N-Out which was terrible, I don't recommend it. It was me like stress eating and I would just like be so sad because I'm like, man, they think my business is terrible. It must be terrible. I'll never forget. I remember when we raised our series B from Andreessen Horowitz, their direct competitor, and I won't name names, but it was like tier one top firm. Like they had passed, their competitor had passed on us and they didn't even look at this round. And they texted me and asked to meet at Dreamforce. And literally the investor was like, I'm so sorry. Like we got it wrong. You were right. This is clearly a thing. And it was redeeming, it felt good, and made me realize that investors don't really know if your business is any good, they're guessing based on their own parameters. Markets decide on whether this is gonna be successful. So as you're going through all these steps, 
It's going to be grueling. It's the fundraising is super hard. Very few companies actually fundraise, but that doesn't mean you're not going to do it. This is the this is the ticket to get in, right? If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So I want you to know that investors don't decide markets do. And fundraising is hard and it's a numbers game. You're going to pitch a lot of fun, a lot of investors and only a small percentage of them will say yes. And then you'll have your round and then you're off to the races. And if you're successful, you have to do it all over again. And I've seen founders who are professional fundraisers, they've raised and exited companies. Even they in late stages will tell you that fundraising is super hard, even for them. So it's going to be hard for you as you get, get at it, but we still need to do it because that's what's required. And so ultimately, what I want you to know is if you know that markets decide, investors don't really know and fundraising is hard, here's the one thing. Great businesses will eventually get funded. So don't confuse the fundraising process that you do, the fundraising activities with the business building activities. They're two different things. Fundraising activities will get you in money and that can help you better build a better business, but you still have to make sure that you're building a better business. You're building a great business. Great businesses will eventually get funded. And it's so easy as you go through all these steps and you go into the pitch deck and you're promising these things and the vision is so amazing. Yeah, but everyone's gonna be like, prove it, man. Like, just, just prove it. And if you can, then there's gonna be lines out the door to give you money and you're gonna be like, screw you, you, you weren't like you, you passed it before. I don't want to do business with you. I'd rather go with this guy. Or maybe you won't, like it's up to you. But the main thing here is that what you really need to understand is that you also need to be building a great business. And if you build a great business, then you'll get funded. And so all these things will set you up for success in your fundraise, but ultimately you have to be successful in building a great business. And I'll say this, it's, Really easy to say, well, what about Quibli, which like just died recently after raising like 40 gajillion dollars? Or what about this company? They didn't have anything and they were able to raise. It's very possible that they raised on promise, right? Maybe it was a prior team and they said, we're gonna go after this. It's very possible that's the case. It's also possible that the investors' guesses were wrong and the markets decided that it's terrible. Is it possible to raise without real, a real business fundamentals? Maybe. But you have to decide, am I gonna go raise with the hopes of a fluke or am I gonna go raise because my business is awesome? And you have to decide that. And that's what you need to be figuring out. So to recap, as you raise your seed round, number one, remember, are you raising on promise or traction? And are you qualified to raise on promise if you're choosing that or do you have enough traction? Number two, do you, do you truly have a venture scale idea? And check out that TAM video for that or uh, to understand that and also look at the angel versus VC versus all VC video. I'll link to it below. Number three, get quality angels. It, it makes everything easier for your seed and series A and everything thereafter. Uh, and the reason angels are super important before even before your seed is after that they get priced out. They won't be, really be able to invest in series A and series B rounds. They really wanna get in early. So if you're raising a seed, try to get in some angels first, maybe split it up. Number four, build an amazing pitch deck. Check out that video where I explain my 12 slide pitch deck. And number five, remember investors don't decide if your business is any good, markets do. So build a great business while you're doing the fundraising process. All of the videos that I mentioned, you should dig into those. I'll link to them below, there's a list. Also, if you're building a SaaS business, what you really need to do is create a strategy on how you're gonna grow your business, including your funding and exit strategy. So this is why I created my five point SaaS growth strategy guide. It goes into detail on how to build a growth strategy for your SaaS business. And it also has additional resources, including a 12 slide pitch deck and additional fundraising videos uh, inside of that guide as well. It's an end to end guide for creating your strategy. So all you need to do is go to getunstoppable.com slash strategy to download that guide or follow the link below. Completely free, it'll give you the golden resource of what you need to grow your SaaS business. If you got value from this video, be sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. If you have fellow SaaS founders, be part of a SaaS group, a WhatsApp group, a Slack channel, please share this video with them. It'll mean the world to us. If you're part of an accelerator program, please share this video and this channel with your fellow members so that they get value as well. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon where you'll get notified every single time I drop a video like this that's super actionable with the right strategies from someone that's actually done it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I wanna thank you for watching. And remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business. But when you are with us, yours is gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK and I'll see you in the next episode.
everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business, but with, oh, let's read that. Uh, bleep out the f 